Hello and welcome again to my online physical science lecture supplement video series. In today's video I wanted to introduce the fourth lecture uh, which I offer in this course which is about work and energy. Um, the basic idea behind this lecture is that uh, energy, mechanical energy at least, tends to be conserved within a closed system. Um, so a object which is falling will retain the same energy at the beginning of its fall as at the end of the uh, <clears throat> as at the end of its fall to the ground, provided that there are no outside forces in this earth object system. As it turns out, there often is an outside force, such as friction or air resistance, which does cause the object to lose energy, and that energy ends up be becoming variously uh, things like sound waves or heat or so on that is sort of bled into the environment. But we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves with that uh, main idea. The um, the way that these uh, courses, or that this topic is usually covered in a typical course, is that first the concept of work is introduced. So, work is uh, defined in physics as the product um, of force times parallel distance over which that force is applied. So, it's a scalar quantity and it has units of newtons times meters which we call joules. Um, mechanically uh, work tends to involve a force and a motion. So work is often uh, sort of the the end goal of our energy production. For example in the US we, we produce energy, we turn it into electrical energy, send that to houses, and that then ends up um, operating a blender, for example, or operating a um, like a rototiller if you're out gardening, or operating a power tool, a drill, or for that matter it can operate a, a light bulb which is then just transferring to a different kind of energy. Um, but, but most of these things end up being uh, mechanical work. And in fact, very early forms of power generation, uh, in, for example, in the, the uh, high Middle Ages, or, or even relatively low Middle Ages, 11th century, 12th century, etc., the monks who had various monasteries scattered throughout Europe started developing things like the water wheel which they would place in water and the river would sort of flow underneath the water wheel and push this paddle so that the paddle starts spinning and that starts turning a gear shaft and so on and so it would do everything from churning butter for them to um, basically separating out uh, yarns to make a, t you know, to make clothing and so on. Um, in any case, work itself requires that there be some force applied to some object, that that object move, and that that object's motion has some component which is parallel to the direction in which the force is applied. So, for example, if I uh, push against the wall. I'm not really doing any work on the wall because the wall is not moving. Even though I'm pushing on it, the wall is not moving and so I'm not really doing any uh, uh, work on it. So um, zero work is done in that instance. On the other hand, if I get up and take my chair and push my chair along room, I am doing some work on that chair. Or if I pull the chair back like this, I am doing some work on my chair in doing that. 
because I'm applying some force, the chair is moving some distance, and moreover, um, some component of that force is actually in the direction that the chair is moving. In fact, if I push on the chair, let's look at that again. If I push on the chair from the top, part of the force that I'm applying is actually going downward because I'm kind of pushing down into the chair from the side I'm kind of pushing down into the chair. Some is some of my force is going this way, some of my force is going this way. Since the chair is going this way, it's the part of the force that's in this direction that matters for figuring out how much work is done. And one way that you can uh, do that is you figure out what is the uh, direction that the chair is moving this way what is the direction in which the force is being applied this way and you take the angle between those two directions and then the cosine of that angle times the total force times the total distance gives you how much work is done um, so oftentimes we end up um, working against some other force. So as I was pushing that chair across the room, although I was applying some force to it, I was moving at more or less a constant speed, a constant velocity even, same direction, same speed. And the what that implies is that there's some other force at play here, specifically friction. And so in this case, I'm actually working against friction. I'm not really making the chair speed up or slow down, I'm just making it move with a constant speed. Similarly, if I have some object and I decide to pick it up or lift it with a constant speed, I'm basically doing work by pushing upward on the object. I'm working against gravity, which is pulling downward. And when I work against some other force like gravity, I actually can get the energy uh, that I expelled into lifting that object back by letting gravity just pull the object back down to the ground. So if I drop the, the object, it falls. Gravity does some work on it. And what this implies is that there is a second type of um, sort of stored ability to do work, if you will. Uh, and that stored ability to do work is called potential energy. It's the potential that some force has to do work on an object. So in this case, if I take a calculator and I lift it up higher into the air, then I've done some work on it and that work manifests by the fact that it has a higher gravitational potential energy than it had before. If I were to release it, gravity will now do work on this thing causing it to fall. So what happens while the object is falling? Well, gravity works on the on the object, on the calculator, for example. Hopefully, if I were to drop it, maybe it would not break. Um, so I'm not going to actually try demonstrating that with the calculator. But uh, as it falls, gravity is doing work on it. And that manifests by the fact that the object starts speeding up as it falls. We learned about this in free fall kinematics uh, and, and even more in the section on Newton's laws of motion. So if this thing starts um, falling, it starts speeding up. It starts basically gaining what's called kinetic energy. So the amount of work done by gravity should equal the change in kinetic energy of this calculator from when it's dropped to when it hits the ground. So the change in potential energy is equal to the work done is equal to the kinetic energy uh, at the end minus the kinetic energy at the beginning. So kinetic energy is basically the energy that an object has because it's moving. Now um, if you look at that example I brought up of the river wheel, the, the water pushing the river wheel, the water may or may not be necessarily changing height very much Probably it's maybe going down a uh, slope a little bit, but oftentimes it seems to be moving in an area that's relatively flat. So if the area is relatively flat, 
it's not potential energy that's doing work. It's actually the fact that the river is moving that does work on the wheel. And so kinetic energy basically is a description of how much work an object can do in coming to a stop. So if I take a, you know, let's say maybe I take a gun, and I set up a, a wood block on a little hanger thing, and I shoot the gun at the hanger. The bullet hits the hanger and eventually comes to a stop and causes the hanger to sort of swing upward. Now, in, in actuality, not all of the work done by that, uh, not, not all of the energy that that bullet initially has goes into work of swinging the hanger. Some gets lost because, for example, it heats the hanger up, heats the bullet up. In fact, if you take a, even a simple drill and you drill a hole in a piece of wood, if you feel the drill bit, it will start to feel hot. If you feel the wood, it'll start to feel a little warmer right where you've drilled that hole. So some energy gets lost that way. But a maximum amount of work that can be done in stopping an object is equal to that object's kinetic energy. That energy, that kinetic energy, is given by half of the object's mass times its speed squared. So kinetic energy has also units of joules, as does potential energy. So any kind of energy, any kind of work, has units of joules. And I mentioned at the beginning that energy gets conserved. So what that means is that if you have an object that starts off at some height, ends up at some lower height, it's lost kinetic energy, all that kinetic energy, excuse me, it's lost potential energy, all that potential energy is, is uh, sort of transformed in, into kinetic energy. Or if it's sliding down an incline that has friction on it, Maybe some of that, um, that energy is lost to work done by friction or work done against friction. In other words, um, that energy maybe is lost from the river because it's going into spinning the water wheel. Um, so as far as energy goes, there's basically one other important topic um, to to keep in mind, maybe two more. One is that potential energy is not path dependent, it's only position dependent. So it depends upon the initial position and the final position. If I'm dropping an object, the potential energy depends upon the initial height and the final height. Specifically, the gravitational potential is the object's mass times the gravitational acceleration times the height of the object. So that's one. Um, for a spring, it's half of the spring constant times the displacement from equilibrium squared. Uh, ditto for a rubber band, except for you only care about stretching the rubber band, not compressing it. Um, the other thing uh, that usually is important to discuss in the context of energy is power. And power is just work done per unit time or energy change in energy per unit time and power basically has units of joules per second in the SI system which get the special name of watts so if, if you have a light bulb that has a power of 60 watts that means that it's using 60 joules per second and that's basically it for this introduction to work and energy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and, and that you found it helpful, and thanks for watching.